here at Pearson Bow at Home, located in Old Town Spring in Spring, Texas. We're a little north of Houston. Um, I got a little ahead of myself today. I went ahead and actually um, started painting um, all of my boards to kind of prep for today because who wants to watch me watch paint dry? Um, I certainly don't. Um, so our base coat is angelic. That's what we use, Angelic uh, Paint Couture. It's a nice creamy white color. So you can see we've got that on the board. And you see we have a little knot here. I'm not really concerned with that at all. And uh, we got this board at Lowe's. You can grab them there. Um, they're 15 inch round boards. They use them for tabletops. You can use them for um, all kinds of crafty projects um, you have. So pretty easy um, project you can get here. And it's a one inch with that kind of curvy edge because you want a nice edge to it. All right, so after we have our first coat and it's dry, I want to have a little pizzazz to my piece. And since I'm going to be using a transfer that has lettering and flowers, and the flowers are kind of pale and pastel, so I want to use a contrast but nothing high contrast if that makes sense. I want like some texture here but nothing like black and white, nothing stark. If I had just florals that were bright, then black and white stripes would be perfect. Um, for this project, I wanna go a little more pale, and we're gonna be doing um, stripes on this particular board. So how we do that is super duper easy. Just take some of your blue tape. You probably have some hanging around from any paint projects you've done. I'm gonna go ahead and start this here right in the middle. Okay, and it's going with my grain. So my grain is going in this direction. I'm gonna have my um, piece of tape here going in that direction. I'm gonna kind of put it down really well. And what I wanna do is get our stripes going. So I'm gonna just tear off a little bit here. And I'm a little OCD, so I'm gonna put them on the uh, top edge here and the bottom edge so I can make sure that my stripes line up. This is super easy. No pencil drawing, no measuring, all that good stuff. And everything we go over today is something that you can go over and do on a piece of furniture that you want to jazz up as well. So you don't necessarily have to do a Lazy Susan like we're doing. And again, we're just gonna pull that little piece of tape up and reposition it here. We're actually gonna go here in the middle. And we're gonna use it to line up our next stripe. All right, so we've got our stripes taped off. And like I said, I'm not real worried about the edges at all. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of push those down a bit. And again, we did our first coat, which was angelic, which is a nice creamy white kind of a, a buttery color. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna use for my stripes, like I said, I wanted it to be a little more subtle. We're gonna use the Charlotte Gray. It's gonna give me a nice pale contrast. There's just something about opening a can of paint that's in a can. I don't know what it is. Just the feeling of opening that is just the best. All right. So I'm gonna use what's in the lid here. And I'm gonna take just something I have laying around. So I have a lot of these blue sponges from our classes. Um, this one has seen better days. So I'm gonna use this one for our project. You can use makeup sponges. Um, you can dab with a brush. But I will tell you, don't um, smear or don't kind of brush in because you'll get extra paint going underneath those tape marks or tape lines. You don't want that. So I'm gonna use literally very little. We're gonna take a little bit here and I'm actually gonna dab some off. I'm gonna use my uh, paper here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and start here. And like I said, I'm not really worried about if I get paint here on the edges, it's not a big deal. We're not going for perfection. We want this piece to look aged like we found it. You know, so, you know, old vintage pieces are never perfect. And this color is so similar when you're putting it on as it's wet to the angelic. It may be a little hard to see where you're getting it, and that's okay. 
Like I said, I'm okay with it not being fully covered with having some like blank spots or kind of faint in other areas. Not a big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the tape off. I like to take it off when it's wet so I don't have any pull. So now you can see the difference there. guys this paint is super smooth it is wonderful it's smooth as butter it does go on like a dream and it covers like a dream as well all right so I'm going to show you real quick this is what we've got right now on this one of course that gray stripe is nice and wet right now so I gotta wait for that to dry but I don't want to make you wait for it to dry either. So we're going to go ahead and set this aside. Because I'm already ready for the next step. So once you've got whatever you're doing for your base, you can have, like I said, a stripe method, which is easy. You can do a, um, I did a stencil on this piece. And just so you can see here, I got it on the edge. Like seriously, not a big deal. And I've already put the Lazy Susan base on that. Now that you get at Lowe's as well. So super easy. This has the little feet to protect your table and you just turn it and use a three quarter inch screw and attach it to your base. It's a 12 inch. They do have some that are cheaper, that are square. You can certainly do that. Since we sell these here in the shop, we opt for a higher end look so that you have the best performance. And the best look so not that anybody's looking at the back back side but we want to make sure it looks good all right so now we've got our paint and the reason we need our paint to be good and dry is that we're going to also be doing a transfer next but remember this little section here that i was like don't worry about this let me help you remedy that all right we're going to play with the metallics this is stardust and you guys this metallic pat packs a huge punch. You don't need a whole lot. I've already done several projects with this little four ounce can of metallic. I'm gonna open that up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm taking a little one inch crafty brush and I'm gonna get these edges. So what I'm gonna do is just load my brush lightly. So not a huge amount there. And I like to work on the edge of my table so that I can get a good um, perpendicular to the, the piece I'm working on. So that way I don't have to worry about taping anything off. We're going to use that, this edging to basically um, make a perfect circle in a way. And I will tell you, the, um, these little rounds are not perfect. They are you know, kind of rough edges sometimes. Like this one's a little rougher than most, but just kind of paint it. See how we've got that? And then we're gonna paint up going this direction. So that's why I like that perpendicular so that you can get in here and just paint that edge. It's just easier going kind of perpendicular than trying to go, you know, dabbing it on this way. All right, so we've got our edges painted now. And again, I just used what was in the top of the lid. This is part of a transfer. You can get a big transfer and make a ton of these if you want. Um, you can use this on a dresser. This was Overflowing Love's transfer. I don't have it any longer, but I'm sure that we can get it for you if you wanted this one. There's others that you can cut apart that have the words um, and the flowers. And of course, we have all the floral ones. I tend to like flowers. So what we're gonna do, let me show you how this is gonna work on this. Now the reason we do wait for this to dry and why I have a new piece here is that I want the base good and dry. It's very humid here and any extra moisture is not gonna uh, let this adhere really well. So we want this to adhere really, really well. And I'm gonna go ahead, because I already know, I've already pre-measured, this is gonna look good here. And I want my um, Harlequin design to be vertical up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Get rid of that. All right. Okay. So we're 
gonna just set it here. And I gotta watch out, my little um, metallic is still a little bit wet. It's not a big deal and it won't hinder me on my current, what I'm doing. All right. Okay, I think we're gonna go right there, okay? And you can tape this down if you want, but once you start pushing it on, it's gonna be on there. Um, so be careful, be ready that that's where you want it to be. Um, all your transfers come with this fabulous tool, it's a stick, that's all it is. But I will tell you it works better than uh, most other products I've tried. Um, I did lose these the other day and a popsicle stick works just fine. So um, what we're gonna do, and I just kind of start anywhere, I'm kind of willy-nilly. So we're gonna just start pressing down, start burnishing this design on your piece. And we're just gonna kinda go all the way around. And we wanna make sure that this adheres really well to your piece that you're working on. So whether you're working on a dresser, um, you can do this on glass, you can do this on canvas, which is something I kinda wanna try. Uh, painting a canvas and then adding some transfers to it. I think that would be kind of fun. Um, you can pretty much add it to anything that's flat. And uh, I hope this one doesn't give me too much trouble. I have a little kind of rough wood here and that's just that's the way this piece was. So I'm not going to fret about it. I'm just going to work this all over. And like I said, we're really going to burnish this piece all over. And a lot of times as I'm doing this, this is where it's a little rough on my board. It's not a big deal. I'm just gonna make sure it's really well adhered. Seeing what's sticking, what's not. So that hasn't stuck yet. So I wanna go ahead and hit that a little bit more. Sometimes I have a little bit of trouble on the scrollier sides and sometimes in my lettering. When you get to the main parts, you don't have near as much trouble but as I go you just kind of peel it and burnish as you pull it back ah see we've got one stick in there not a big deal just go back rub that down just like that see my L is sticking this is the part that takes probably the longest on these and you have to have a little bit of patience as you pull those back see my L. and sometimes I've torn these it's not a big deal just lay it right back down and keep burnishing like that one's not coming off so we'll go ahead and go back now I have heard you can do a trick of putting these in the freezer before you apply them I have not done that Maybe I will try it soon. Sometimes I'm like, well, it kind of works for me, so I'm not gonna worry about freezing it. Plus, there has to be room in my freezer for one of these. All right, let's see. Voila! All right, so this is done. All right, so she's not done yet. So what I like to do to make sure that my transfer is good and adhered is that we have these finishing pads and they're great but they're humongous so i do cut mine up into smaller bite-sized pieces so i've cut this up and i get quite a bit of use out of these so what i'll do is i'll take this finishing pad that i've now cut up and i'm going to go over my whole transfer to make sure that all those bubbles are out if you leave any air bubble behind it will cause your transfer to lift. And you don't want it to lift. You've done all this work to have it lift. That would be a total bummer. So, I will tell you guys, if you do these on a mirror, they adhere really well. So you better be ready to have it lined up exactly where you want it because it takes it really, really well. So it also will kind of show off if you make a boo-boo Again, it's okay. You can also go over it and kind of give it a distressed look if you'd like. And these are generally kind of distressed anyway, so 
you don't really have to worry about being perfect. We're throwing perfect out the window. All right. So just remember, give your paint some time to sit, to dry. I give ours 24 hours before I put the um, transfers on, only because we are so humid. And I don't, I don't want a product fail. I don't want it to bubble up. I don't want it to come off. So, and again, and I'm putting a lot of pressure on this. These aren't very rough. It's not gonna damage the piece, but I just want you to know we do, and I kind of go when we have letters, kind of go a little gingerly, and then I press them down. I go in their direction. And again, that was just a finishing pad cut up into bits. So what I'm gonna do next is um, we're gonna actually take the crackle on. And it's not your typical crackle where you put a paint color, you put your crackle medium on, and then you put another paint color. No, this is actually fabulous crackle. I cannot tell you how much I love this crackle. It's like the bomb. Um, it's one of my favorite crackles in the world. So it is a two part. So you have your sizing, which is step one, okay? And then you have your step two, which is gonna create the beautiful crackles. Um, it is a longer process than your regular um, crackle medium, but it's well worth the wait. So we're gonna go ahead and do step one on this piece, and we have one magically ready for the second part. So I'm gonna get this lid off, and just give it a good shake here. And so I just put this transfer on. I don't need to wait for anything on this step. So I'm gonna take just a brush and I'm going to liberally apply this all over my piece. And you wanna make sure you get good coverage. You don't wanna to be too skimpy, but you don't want it to be dripping either. So just apply it all over your piece. Just go all over. And we're going random. It doesn't need to be like any specific kind of direction. Just kind of go all over. You're going all over that transfer. Okay. Make sure we got good coverage on the top of this. All right, and then now we're gonna make sure we also got the edges. So we just wanna get this on all over the edges. And what happens, this is gonna take about 30 minutes before you can put on your step two. This will dry. It will not be as shimmery or shiny as it is right now. It's gonna dry, but it's gonna dry tacky. It's gonna feel like spray glue, if that makes, if you're familiar with like, when you're crafting and you have little um, spray glue and you attach a piece, it's gonna stick like that. It's gonna feel sticky tacky like that. So we're almost to the edge here. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, so that has all of our sizing for step one of our crackle mixture on it. This is the Paint Couture Crackle. And I'm telling you guys, it's amazing. All right, so we're gonna let that one sit. You let it sit for about 30 minutes, and then you'll be able to do step two, which is um, what makes it crackle. So I'm gonna move this over. Okay, so we have, this one is done to, we've got step two is already applied to it. So once this was dry, it was tacky. This one already had the sizing and it was dry. It's kind of tacky. I put crackle part two on it and I applied it with a brush just like that one. So just apply it all over liberally, all over the piece. Um, the more or the thicker you have it, the thicker the, the crackles will be. The thinner you have it, the thinner the crackles will be. Um, and that'll show up as it dries. Now step two takes eight to 10 hours. So once you've got step one, 30 minutes, it's nice and tacky, kind of sticky like glue, then you'll go ahead and put step two, your crackle medium on it, you'll walk away and come back tomorrow. So um, there's no crushing it, you can't 
keep try it or anything like that to get to go faster. It's just, that's the way this particular product works. Take your time with it. So this one, I don't know if you guys can see it. Those little crackles, really kind of, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna um, bring that out by using glaze. So one of my favorite glazes is the black chiffon. So I'm gonna shake this up and the couture glaze is a little bit thicker than any others that I've used. It's kind of like a pudding consistency. And what I like about it is so I've got a little bit more work time. I don't have to hurry up and put it on and wipe it off real fast. I do have some work time with this so I can complete a project and not kind of freak out about it. Cause that was kind of my problem before. I was either like trying to hurry, have a spray bottle ready and, or I had to top coat it and I didn't want to do that. So, cause I'm kind of a lazy painter. I'm just going to take a chip brush for this. You can use any brush cause it washes really well out of it. This is one I use a lot. You can see it's kind of, kind of beat up. So I'm just going to kind of shove that in here. Some of that and actually what I'm going to do, I kind of like having our height here. All right, so we've got that nice height. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to apply this on there, y'all. We're just going to kind of get after it. So don't worry about it's going to look kind of crazy right now because we want to get it in all those crackles to kind of show Those are going to nicely show up when we wipe it back. So I know you're probably going, oh my God, it looks disgusting. So we're going to get the edges. Like it was pretty. She's ruined it. Oh my God. No worry. So we're going to take a lint-free cloth or a t-shirt or whatever you have on hand. We are going to wipe it back. And this is really so that we can see the crackle shine through. Probably need a bigger rag than this one, but that's okay. All right. See those beautiful cracks? Oh my gosh. And you can see your transfer and everything is complete, it's done. Once this dries, you are done. You do not need to do a top coat. The crackle dries with such a hardness that you do not need to top coat it at all. So that, that kind of makes my day. Okay, we're gonna kind of wipe off some of this excess on it. Okay. And you can use any of the couture crackles for any depth of darkness you want. So if you want more of a browner tone, you can use the Van Dyke Brown. You can use um, the Copperhead is a beautiful color. I have it, guys. It's a little dirty. So it is complete. So once this dries, then you're done. Um, like I said, no need to top coat it. It's all ready to go. And the thicker you put your um, crackle size two or crackle two on top, the thicker your cracks are gonna be, the thinner is where you have it um, not as thick. And apply it just every which way. Don't get in a habit of going up and down. Just apply it any which way. You don't have to have any particular direction. I like going all the directions so you get like a multi-directional on your crackle. So I love this. I hope you guys learn something new today and can take away some of this product or you know, some of this material we learned today and apply it to maybe a chest, a dresser. And we'd love to see what you guys are working on. Again, you can buy all of our products on our website, which is pearsonbell.com. If you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends. I would love that and appreciate it. I will see you guys later. Happy Monday.